So to date that, I will say that sometimes uh, the ones who are who are so geared towards help meet, they're not interesting. The ones who are so geared towards help meet, uh, is it help meet or help mate? Just for clarity, I think Bibles help meet, but I don't mind. Yeah, the 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 uh, I'm gonna look it up. The, the the New Orleans translation is help mate. We just gonna go help mate for the sake of nah, this convo. Cool. You hear me? The, the the yeah the the, the the N the N O L A translation yeah it help me so so we gonna so I'm gonna say this you say that sometimes they aren't interesting man I I I disagree with that that they aren't interesting I don't think that many people um I don't think that many people really understand the value of of someone who is down to be a helpmate you hear me like like the value of someone like that. Even women have started to feel like, unfortunately, society has made it to where women start to feel like they are subservient or they are less than or they are missing something valuable in life if they aren't um, a boss of some sorts and if they aren't a star. You know, like, like the internet has made it to where everybody has basically an equal shot to become famous and to become a star. And you might not even be able to identify what your gift or your talent or your skill is, but everyone has an equal playing field by, you know, having their own platform, essentially, with social media, uh, with IG, with TikTok. So that being said, a woman who is secure enough in herself to be able to embrace her talents, to be able to embrace um, the gifts that, you know, that, that God has blessed her with, but to understand that she, you know, is intentionally choosing to use those gifts and, and use those talents uh, within the context of saying, I'm going to be my man's helpmate. I think that's beautiful. And the last thing that could ever be to me is uninteresting. You know, some people like just because somebody got a lot of followers. No, no, no. They can have a lame personality, bro. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. I'm not saying that followers are what make people interesting. Or even talent. Even talent don't make you interesting. Right, right, but not even talent. I think for me, it's it's wit. For me, it's um, uh, perspective on life. For me, it's um, colors. And so I think you know, uh, there's a part of me that wants you know that that's probably that's feeling like you. Like I, I just want consistency, man. I just want consistency. But on the other side, I also want. I want a little bit of. I want to be a little off balance, just a little, you know what I'm saying? Just to keep, I want to be on my toes. That's you why know? you need somebody who from the hood, bro, who got a little bit of hood in them. I, 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 but uh, <clears throat> shout out to all the hood women that's on this right now that you got a little bit of hood in you. I value that. I, I, you still got to have the character and other stuff. Let me just, let me just keep talking. Let me keep, let me, let's move away. But, but all I'm saying is, yeah, there's a certain level. There's a balance. You know what I'm saying? There's a balance. Um, and, uh, you know, it just hasn't happened for me yet. Yeah, it just hasn't happened for you yet. Well, you're not alone. You're not alone, my boy. I thought I had it, bro. Uh, and I don't talk about my personal life uh, hardly at all. Um, but I have made an intentional decision that, with class, in in a, in a very classy way, I think that that side of my life is something that um uh that. You know, when speaking about it in my music, it can be done in a way that is therapeutic for my, my audience and for my listeners. So the song Shine On, um, you know, for people to see that I still have a perspective, you know, focused on uh, shining my light, you know, every day in a way that's going to bless others. Despite the fact of like, man, that man really gave his all. That man thought that this was going to be his wife. That man got a, 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 a house, you know what I'm saying, with them in mind, like, like all this type of stuff. And it didn't work. And 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 thinking about that type of um, stuff, that's gonna that's gonna inspire somebody somewhere. Because otherwise, I'm the last to want to put my my business, you know, out on out on Front Street. But I do think that people need to see, like you said in the beginning of the convo, that it's okay to try at love and to be like, hey, it was unsuccessful. But that doesn't mean that I necessarily did anything wrong. If anything, God could have been saving us 
from a train wreck in the future. And mm-hmm. I definitely, I definitely believe that. Definitely believe that because me, I can, I can speak. I don't know if you ever went through this, but oftentimes when I've met people, they have presented to me the. Ver- I only know how to be one way, bro. Like I promise you, I don't know how to be, you know, extra like to the, Like I, I don't know how to be extra like this or I just know how to be one way. But I have met a lot of people who present to me the version of themselves that they know would be most compatible with what I represent and what I stand for. And mm-hmm. that, and I have fallen for that because I think that that, that, um, that, uh, that desire to, 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 to hit that home run or to score that touchdown in that area of my life, that desire to be married, that desire to find the one. We got a song together called The One. We've been talking about this for years. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've been on this tip, bro. Like, that being said, I will be the first to say that um, there's a big part of me, there's a big part of D1 that is ready to like move fast because also our perspective on life is shaped by our experiences. So, you know, anybody who knows me knows how close I am with my grandparents, like super close. My grandpa, you know, uh, my grandma just passed last year. Rest in peace, bro. They got married after knowing each other for three months. And they had the most amazing marriage for 66 years until she passed last year. So for me, not that I'm saying I have to do that, but I have seen it happen in my family. And I I, know, yeah, that, you know, like it don't have to take forever. I don't don't know if things are that simple anymore. You know, I I, I feel like... uh, And I'm just just being real. Like, you know, I, I can... It, honestly, if you were given what I'm about to say, I would probably just be devil's advocate for that and present a more ideal way. But like at the end of the day, I, I feel like there are there are a lot of factors now. And I feel like people are also more insecure and therefore more masked. And so it takes a while now to see who people really are. I mean, it it because check this out. <clears throat> If you've hung out with people before and they only show you one side, like we got, we have, I have friends that I've only seen play basketball. That's it. I don't know anything else about them. They could be doing anything. I don't know what they do. All I know, and I know them real well, my dude, and I've only really seen them play basketball. Mm -hmm. And, And when it comes to dating, like the way we are, what our life calls for a lot of times as you said people uh women will absolutely put out what they feel like is useful they'll put that out first and it takes a while for the other stuff to even come out and so here's the thing there's nothing worse than thinking it was a sure shot and it's not i mean there's nothing worse than thinking it was a sure shot but it's not nah we know we know when it's uh we know when it's a long shot because to me the short shots are the ones that we take for granted a lot of times um like like let's be honest we 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 tend to take the short shots for granted and we tend to say those will be there you know what i'm saying like that's not going anywhere that's a short shot and that makes people in life like lean towards the long shots or even the moving targets people want to people want to try to you know, get those big wins. And that being said, bro, like, I don't think that love is supposed to be that way because um, at the end of the day, even when you get what was a long shot to you at first, it's going to be regular to you after a while. For sure. Just like, just like that new, that new car that you wanted. That means go for long shots. Huh? That means you should only go for long shots. No, no. What? No, because the the long shot is going is going to turn into a short shot after you have it, and it just becomes normal to you. It, it, at that point, the short shot, I feel like, bro, I'm a teacher. I was a teacher before I was a rapper. That being said, I am always, I am always drafting for potential. I am always looking at a child who doesn't know math when they come into my class and doesn't know how to multiply fractions, and I'm like, oh, wait till I get my hands on them. Uh, and that might be to a fault because somebody said if you're always looking to, you know, to develop someone, then that can be 
you know, that can be a gift or a curse. But me, I have no problem helping someone be more and greater and better than they ever thought that they could be because the world looked at them as a sure shot. And I looked at them as a, as a star, you know what I mean? Who just needed the right platform. Like and, that's, you know. Uh, this is what I want to say though. Like it's not, um, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to dumb it down to long shots being better than short shots or something like that. That's not really what I'm saying. I think that there's a certain level of, um, as you said earlier, like it's choice. Yeah. And what I've learned in my life is always operate out of choice and not convenience. And, uh, and, and the thing is, in, in, in our lives, there's always a convenient choice and there's always just a choice choice. Can and I ask you a, hold on, can I ask you a question, bro? Okay. Because I know my answer to this question. Um, and I know your answer to this question. Do you enjoy, if, it's, if, if you're going after only long shots, do you enjoy wondering if you're a priority to these long shots? Because that comes along with these long shots, bro. No, you're right. You're right. Do you, and, and me, me, I am at a point. You just, in, want somebody to, you just want somebody to have the meal ready. Let's make it simple. You hear me? I'm from New Orleans. Like, just cook me some gumbo, some jambalaya. It's real some easy. Etouffee. I'm saying, no, it shouldn't, love shouldn't have to be that hard. Like, I'm to that point, bro, to where all of that, that mental gymnastics, bro, the mental gymnastics of, is this person thinking about me? Um, am I important to this person? Is this person too busy for me? You, you, you must like that. You must no, like that. That's no, the no. Chicago in no, you. No, no, yeah. no. Yeah. It's the Chirac no. in you. Trust me, you know, I've, I've lived it, and it has worn me clean out. Um, uh, but. But. But a part of me, I guess, you know, you know what it is? I think a part of me, dang, I don't know. Exactly. I, but, but I will say this. Y'all save this live, y'all. Y'all screenshot I'm, this moment. Screen record this moment, y'all. Never going to be with somebody that I feel like I'm not a main priority. What I'm saying is, I, but I guess what I'm saying is because I know what it means to have a non-human child. I know what that is. I guess I have a little more grace for it. As a matter of fact, I appreciate when I appreciate when um when when both me and the girl work. So here's the thing. Um you say it should be easy. I'm saying that if I already come to the equation with a wife already named Life Music, and a kid named Johnny and Molly, the full EP coming out Friday. If I already come like that, um, I know it's going to be work. I know it's going to be work. And so I don't come expecting ease ever. But it's double work if you get with the I mirror get, image of you. But I, no, that's what I'm saying. So it's not, it's not about a mirror image. It's just about you know, when you do end up with somebody that turns out to be very talented, uh, amazing, uh, chances are they're going to have moments where they are just like us. And so in those moments, I accept work. Like, I don't, I personally don't feel like love um, is, is going to be easy. Like, I, and I, and I enjoy, I enjoy I enjoy the, the, the wins. I enjoy the battle wins. I enjoy the battle wins. I enjoy, hey, look, we didn't see eye to eye here, but we talked that thing out. I enjoy that. And me, bro, I'm just, I'm just more literal. I'm more straight to the point. A wise, man once, a wise man once said, what type of games are being played? How's it going down? It's on till it's gone, then I got to know now. I got to know now. Is you with me or what? You're trying to get me a nut. Cause I just want to get me the bud. Now forget them last two bars. I, I I'm not I'm not advocating <laughs> those. But what type of games are being played? How's it going down? It's on I, until it's gone. And we, I got to know now. So, see, this is what I'm saying. We we ain't talking about games. We ain't talking about games. That's what I'm saying. He, 
we ain't talking about games here. I'm not talking about games. That's all it is, bro. Women are not women are not like women are not that uh that far from you know from reality to where they they're not that out of touch emotionally to where they don't know when it's like, hey, I kind of got him guessing. I kind of got him, you know, oh, yeah. on his toes. They know. Oh, they, they, they love that. that that's games. That's, that's, that, but that's what I'm saying. When you see it's games, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about games. I'm talking about understanding that there's a part of us that when we came into this relationship, it was fixed. And so I have a certain level of grace and appreciation for the same way I fighting through what was already the same through the same way I'm fighting through my own tour schedule. Um, I appreciate somebody's able to work through those things. I don't think it can be, listen, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Jay-Z, Beyonce can just always, I can't, I don't think it can be easy. You know what I'm saying? Just because of who they are and what comes in their life. I'm not talking about the, the, the Christian factor, the God factor, because we can argue that until we blew in the face and we've seen a lot of Christian Jesus led decisions that maybe didn't work out that amazingly either. And so all I'm saying is we have to be mindful about, I guess I don't, I, I guess, I guess I see love in what you are able to sacrifice in those moments. You feel what I'm saying? And so I I I just I I love to watch it and I and I hope that any woman that's with me loves to watch when I take something big and sacrifice it for them. Even if it's just a moment. Even if you know I ain't gonna work on music today. You know what? I ain't gonna have I ain't gonna I, I ain't gonna do this, blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? And so I just appreciate that reward. I understand that it's uh it's not easy all the time. It's not simple, it's not southern, it's not old school. But I do appreciate when somebody's doing what I'm doing, and that's fighting through greatness to just be good. I was gonna write a whole book about greatness and goodness. And my, my friend Duana, who was on here for a second, she knows I was gonna write it. Because greatness, this pursuit of doing things that you know affect this world, um, versus goodness, which is just handling you and the people right around you. Sometimes it's really hard to do both. We've seen a lot of great men. Turns out they weren't great to their kids. We, they weren't great to their wives. We've seen a lot of great pastors that couldn't handle it at home. And so I really just value when a great person works to be good because of love. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do. And so I appreciate it when I see other women do the same thing. That's, I, guess. Yeah. I feel you, though. I feel you. Because when I come home after a tour and the house is empty and I don't smell nothing, Hey, not a great feeling, but hey, man. <laughs> I'm, I appreciate the greatness and goodness coming together. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just believe, I believe in people. Um, I believe in people's greatness, even if, even if it's not, uh, even if it's not coined by the world recognizing them, you know, by saying, Oh, we're all celebrating you because of your talent or because of your skill set or, or something that's on public display. Um, oftentimes, I'm, I think, I, yeah. Oh, I, I, I'm, huh? about, I'm just talking about calling. Calling, yeah. I, I think that, I think that uh, you know, back to the sports analogies, I think that we know that there have been many examples of people who are the, uh, the glue, essentially, to, like, LeBron James isn't LeBron without Savannah without Savannah James. Savannah James is great. You know what I mean? The world celebrates LeBron James' greatness, but without Savannah James, LeBron, with, with the same talent that he has right now, would not be LeBron James. And I'll and I put anything on that. Um, that's what I'm talking about. So I, I just feel like when we talk about greatness, yeah. You, 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 you've always wanted from as long as I remember, you've always kind of wanted that that girl that could come in and be a part of the D1 family business. Mm -hmm. That's still true? The D1 family business. Like, that's, like, 
Like, oh, oh, be a part, be a part of what well, I feel like as a man, it was my job before I met the woman that I'm going to be with. It was my job to, uh, Miles Monroe speaks about this. It's a man's job to, to know his work and to know what God has put him on this earth to do. And right. therefore, like, I feel like I have clearly, clearly, anyone who knows D1 and, and, and sees what I've been doing all these years can clearly say, yes, through this man's music, through this man's ministry, through his public speaking, through his other business ventures, he is clearly walking, you know, in the calling that God has uh, uniquely designed him for. So therefore, bringing, uh, bringing the, the love of my life, you know, the woman who I'm going to marry into my world. It's clearly not something to where I want that to be compromised. I want that to be something that that she can be like, wow, this is like a so, form of yeah, this is like um, Was there a time that you really wanted you wanted like I, I feel like it, there was a time that 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 your ideal mate would like literally be able to be like a booking manager. Or or like she would like she would like be business minded so you could be artist minded. Or she could be like administrative, so you could be artistic. Is that is that? Am I reading that right? Remembering that right? You're remembering it exactly right. Okay. That is, yeah, to a T. I, okay. jo, you know what I'm saying? Like Jordan and Kobe can't be on the same team, bro. Um, in no. the prime, in the prime of they, in the prime of their careers, like I, I got a song where. I say that, you know, um, and that's and so for me, that is self-awareness, you know, like I've I've had the long shots before and the long shots to where it's like, huh, you think I'm a moving target when we get off of this live, we can talk. And it's like, boy, that was a heck of a moving target right there. Like, you know, when you're with even more of a moving target than yourself, you you start to Amen. you start, man, you I, know what I'm saying? I feel you. I, I really hey, hey. Oprah and Dr. Phil ain't married. Oprah, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying Oprah and Dr. Phil, Oprah got Stedman, you know what I mean? And Stedman is a boss in his own right, and he does his thing. But there's synergy. There's synergy in their skill sets and in their callings, you know what I, I mean? That's what I'm saying. It's synergy. It's not, about, it's not about somebody doing a lot and somebody kind of doing less. A little, right. Uh-uh. No, it's, it's just, that's all I'm saying is that I appreciate here we go. Here we here we go. Hold on. I don't mean to cut you off, but here we go in the comments. But you just you just want your wife to work for you, man. He he just want his girl to support look, his ministry. Here we go. Here we go. He's he saying a lot of stuff down here. Don't look at he, him. He, here we go. Here we go. I'm about to boy. Look, they said Dr. Phil is married. Exactly. He not married to Ricky Lake. He not married to uh to 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 Geraldo. He not married to none of them people, man. That man. Like is everybody everybody is cut different. Really, before any of this stuff, there's no right or wrong answer. We have to know ourselves, that man. Is, that is that's really it. And I think that's that's the position that I'm taking right now. Because whatever I give, whatever I aim for, and whatever I pursue, and whatever I pat myself on the back for, I also pat myself I pat the girl on the back. I, you know, I also value that in them. And so in this moment where I'm working to handle the great call and the great call, it would be great regardless of the, the followers that I have on here. You know what I'm saying? It would be great, uh, you know, regardless of how people receive the album or anything like that. You know, if people don't listen to this EP that's coming out this Friday with Johnny and Molly, if they don't come to the tour, you can get your tickets at johnnyxmolly.com. If they didn't do that, the the calling that got that call, got got called me to is still a great call, mm -hmm. and I'm saying that within that greatness, I'm still working on being good. And so I also value when I see that. What and up, him? I just all right. that's all. You know what I'm saying? I just so, well. Here, here's the thing, bro. I'm I'm at a point now. Well, man, I do think that. As long as a person, if they have a big calling on them, quote unquote, you know, for the sake of this conversation, not big. Just say, okay, a great calling. If they have another, if they have, if it's another public figure, like I'm to the point where, as long as that person is mature, I feel like it can work. Like, and I'm even talking about myself. Yes, but it takes a little. It takes a little extra. It takes a little extra to make that work. And so, I, 
So love to me is when you do that extra to make that work. Yeah, and to me that to me that's maturity. Like that's 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 just that's maturity. No, that's to one. Do, do that's, that extra. That's one two. That's 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 because I want this relationship. I want this love. So I'm going to do what I have to do to be able to balance greatness for God, for the calling, for the assignment, for the people that I'm called to, and the goodness, so I can handle myself and people that are close to me. That's what I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying I don't want what you want. I want what you want as well. But I, I just value it when it can come out of something that maybe it wasn't um, it wasn't as simple for them to do. Yeah. Here's, here's the other thing too, bro. Um, you know, Lord willing, we're going to live, we're going to live uh, long lives. And with that being said, bro, uh, I'm big on communicating to the point where I would want someone to know that, like, I'm in my season right now. Like, this is my season. I'm a rapper. You know what I'm saying? I, I am in the prime of my career. Um, new single out featuring the game, Shine On, that I'm sure everyone who's on this live is going to be going and stream if they're not already streaming it um, right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm in my prime right now. So, metaphorically, I'm a basketball player that is still, like, on the court. There's going to be a time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let, let that. I, I got to hear that. Oh, yeah. They had a little bit of singing on here. I mean, maybe you could have got somebody that could, like. I mean, you know, maybe, maybe you could have took a rap on tour with you Friday. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know, bro. Uh <laughs> I can't hear nothing. I'm just bobbing my head, though. Can't hear nothing? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, well, it's dope. But, but, but they don't know that. Yeah. But y'all go y'all go stream a single. And even, uh, here's the thing, bro. Uh, because I know that that's the season I'm in right now. Um, you think you're in your prime? Yeah, for sure. But I also know that uh, that this season comes to an end. And there comes a time where it's like, hey, you're no longer a player on the court anymore. Maybe you're now working in the front office for a team, or maybe you're now a head coach somewhere. Okay. But I want to I maximize the time that I have on the court as a player, as D1, the artist, the man who is out here traveling, touring, actively putting music out. You know what I'm saying? That being said, this is a season. Once that season is over with, if I'm with a, um, if I'm with a person who's like, hey, uh, Michelle and Barack. Perfect example. Man, Barack is Scottie Pippen right now. And Michelle Obama is Michael Jordan. And it's a beautiful thing to see. It's a beautiful thing to see. Yeah. And, and so that's that's, that's, all I'm that's all I'm saying. Michelle is more what I'm talking about. Say that again. You don't think Michelle is more what I'm talking about? But Michelle, like when she, from the time that Barack came on the scene, Michelle was Scottie Pippen and Barack was clearly Michael Jordan. I wrong with that that's what i'm saying right now i might be jordan in, in, in the relationship i don't feel like i'm in my prime i feel like i'm in a prime but i feel like i'll be in the prime of something else you know later you know what i'm saying and you're gonna be a pastor one day you know what i'm saying i'm gonna be a, uh you know what i'm saying i'll be a uh uh i don't know but i'm, I'm just a, like you, a. It's prime. and so i guess i'm just i don't mind at some point really being scotty pippen out here you know what I'm saying? In my forties, you know what I'm saying, or something like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm, and and don't get me wrong, I don't want a star, per se. I just want somebody that. I guess I'm just attracted to somebody who is, who is um, who has a little more to consider. A little I, more to consider, man. Look, shout out to all the, shout out to all of the um. The unsung heroes in here, you know what I'm saying? You might not have been. See, bro, I, I'm like I relate to the people like Tom Brady, the people who, you know, I feel like I was a Tom Brady. Tom Brady was a six round draft pick, bro. He was drafted number 199 in the draft, bro. And then from there, it's like, ooh, y'all slept on me, but y'all let me get my foot in the door, so y'all still took me. So you know what? I'm about, I'm about to, I'm about to outdo everybody's expectations right I now. Love it. 
that's my whole story, bro. Nobody in New Orleans, nobody in the rap game, everybody was like, man, this dude was a teacher. This dude don't curse. This dude rapping about God, da 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 This ain't gonna work. And then now it's like, here we are a decade later. Dang, d one still doing this. And, and, and D1 went further already than what everybody thought he was gonna go. So when I think about a woman, I'm, there's something about me that's just like attracted to the idea of someone who ain't there yet but who is trying to get there. And I'm like, yo, let's get there together. You know what I'm saying? Like, like. Yeah, I'm laughing because somebody said they, they spelled out time Brady because you got that New Orleans accent. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, hilarious. Um, that's funny. But anyway, uh, I f listen, I don't think we that far apart. I just think, I think, I think it's like, here's what it is. What we arguing about or where we where we are are far from each other is just the starting point. It's the starting point. So Yeah, you, you want somebody who has a star in Hollywood no, no, no. already. They're in the walk I, of fame. I don't know why you saying star. I did not say star. You did say star. <laughs> no. You did say I did not say star, but what I'm saying is what I'm doing is you realize that okay, I'm out here and I'm doing what I have to do. Um and, 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 and it's something big, something bigger than I ever thought. And so now what I'm trying to do is teach myself to not just be um, accomplished and not just to do great things, but to be a great person. You know what I'm saying? And so I appreciate that journey because what, what's going to happen is we are going to, you, you like the six, six round draft pick that becomes the GOAT. And I'm saying that I also value the goat that can learn the humility and the love and the sacrifice of the six round pick. You understand what I'm saying? And so having both qualities is the goal for both of us. You, whether you bring. So you want, so you want Rihanna and you just want to make Rihanna be somebody that's, uh, that, that's, that's humble and, and that you can teach her how to cook breakfast for y'all in the morning. And, and, and I'm, you want Rihanna though. I'm saying I value that because I know it's like it's like this. I'm a, I'm gonna give you Bible. You ready? You want Rihanna? I want Brianna who work at Dollar Tree. You know what I mean? <laughs> I want Brianna who just got her her her. her she it's, just graduated from Howard. You heard me? She no, just trying to yeah. yeah. This is this is what I'm saying. When the rich young ruler came to Jesus and and said, "What I got to do to follow you?" He said. Because he was like, I've done everything right. I do this right. I'm blah, blah, blah. And I'm, I'm obviously a rich young ruler. Jesus said, I right, sell all your stuff. And the rich young ruler walked away sad. And, and Jesus eventually said something to the effect of, it's harder for a rich man to get to heaven than a camel through the eye of a needle. The only way a rich man, somebody who has so much success and has already sacrificed into this world the only way that he would ever figure it out is through love if you don't love jesus you cannot sacrifice that stuff and so all i'm saying is i appreciate when you are that rich young ruler and you can say you know what i love you enough to even vacate some of those things to me that shows me a level of I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Because what? My friend Dewan said I'm reaching. I don't I'm not reaching at all. All I'm saying is it's all them boy reading them comments. That boy reading them comments. Be my friends. I'm only reading I'm, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying. Like, and hold on, hold on. And the thing is, did I you, you met Dewana. You just met Dewana. Or, or, or you just talking to her. Oh the <laughs> Uh, there, at, at the yeah, with the with the vacation. So check this out. Check this out. What she, up, D? What's up? What's up? I'm gonna I'm use her since she got all, all this stuff to say. That that woman is amazing. She is killing the political game. Every president wants her to work with her. She is all over the place, raising millions for uh, the, uh, the civil rights museum down in Alabama. She is amazing. And what is most amazing about her is that she can submit all of that amazingness to make time for the people that she loves. 
that to me is way more uh, that what I don't say way more, but that to me is so attractive, so appealing. For sure, for sure. Um, and, and I think I love to see it. Go ahead. Mm. Mm. I think that being being with a person who uh who values uh who values both of you all's growth it is important as well. If you're with a person who is only telling you what you need to do more of to kind of like a person who who feels like, oh, I'm the long shot in the relationship. Therefore, this whole relationship is centered around what you need to do more of, you know, to kind of like be able to keep my interest and keep my attention. Man, that's such a red flag. And, and, and I just pray that nobody on this live tonight is that type of person or is with that type of person because I'm just looking for a teammate, man, just a teammate. And in order, in order, to, in order to know, watch this though, in order for us to know um, if we the general managers, you know, of this team, then we got to know what we have on the team. Right now, we're the players on the team. We're the star players. So that being said, we have to know, oh, man, my, my ball handling skills are great. Uh, pause. Never mind. Let me use a different example. Not, not ball handling. Uh, my, uh, my shooting skills. <laughs> All right. My... <laughs> pause. Um, anyway, my shooting skills are great. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Listen. My shooting, my shooting skills are great. My outside game is phenomenal. If I can recognize that about myself, I'm knowing I need to be looking, I need to be drafting for a big who could play on the inside. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I think it's very important for us. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it, yeah, I, man. Since you said that, that's, that's dope. Um, and that's true. That's, and so I, I want to ask you this, because this is very important, especially if you are taking – the long shot approach that DJ Mosky said do, that I'm saying, you know, I, I, I'm starting to lean towards now. Um, how, how many other people are on your team and are you factoring them in? Okay, so you have, a, you playing basketball. You got five people on your team. You're one of the players on this team. Your wife is one of the players on this team. That gives three other there's, there's, there's three other people on that team. And I guess my question is, how much do you lean on other friends and brothers and whatever to, to be a part of your squad? Or do you put a lot of onus on the wife part? Oh, that's a great question. That's a great question. All right, so me and my wife are Kobe and Shaq. Everybody else, my boys, my partners, my homies, you heard me, all them, they, that's Rick Foxes, that's Derek Fishers, that's um, important people, you know, Horace Grants, uh, Devin Georges, you know what I'm saying? But me and my wife, a man and his wife, that's Kobe and Shaq all day. So we're the nucleus of the team, and everything around that is going to be a role player because this is our life that we're talking about. And I don't see anyone... I, love uh, I don't have a, you know, I don't have a, uh, uh, a big, I don't have a manager that is like, yo, hey, sweetie, um, when you get with me, just know that me and my manager, our relationship is probably going to be, you know, closer than me and your relationship is now. Nah, like, like my, when I get a wife, that is going to be my top priority. Therefore, that's the nucleus. We're the nucleus of the team. So we're Kobe and Shaq and everything else around that. I got several business ventures, you know. If you don't have your R. Burnett brand watch, y'all better go get y'all one right after this live. You heard me? That's, that's one of the business ventures I'm a partner in. Luxury handcrafted wooden watches. My business partner, he is important to my life, but he's not going to be more vital than, than my wife is. I agree. Um, so same is, thing with wait, my wait, wait, music wait, producers. Wait, wait, you know, wait, same, like, wait. yeah, that, so that's me. D, but I'm not talking about wife yet. See, here's the thing. I don't want to talk about wife yet. Because we ain't wife yet. We ain't there yet. I'm talking about the single part of this. Because what we're aiming for is wife. But what's, what, what, what I think is, because obviously, you know, we both lived in different cities. We've, we travel to different cities. We've had girlfriends in different cities. So there's a different culture that happens all the time. And so we, we, I know that we can say that by the time we get to marriage, we want to have this thing figured out. By the time I get to marriage, I don't care about a star. By the time I get to marriage, I don't care about blah, 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 blah. I'm talking about in this moment, 
the dating stages. This is the part that is that that we you know there's a lot of risk involved. There's a lot of question marks. Blah 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 blah. In this part, when you are dating somebody, do you make them your shack, assuming that you Kobe, or do you have? a old LeBron like team where there's a lot of role players. And this is one of the main ones maybe, but maybe not that much onus and dependency on them. At this point, I completely agree with you. All I'm saying is I've seen a lot of different perspectives around that. And I want to say just even out here in LA, uh, there is, there's a lot of weight that is put on just friends. There's a lot of priority put on friends that can sometimes uh, rival the boyfriend or girlfriend. How do you feel about that? Not, 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 not with the ring. I'm talking about just getting to it. LA has a toxic dating culture. The, you, America has a toxic dating culture. But, but LA and New York have the 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 utmost of the toxic dating cultures because the the priority on career you got people that are in their mid to late 40s in LA and New York and they're not married and they are perfectly fine with that not because like hey because of spiritual reasons but because they're like yeah I'm still just trying to land that role you know what I'm saying in uh in that new show I'm and, with, I got I, I know folks I almost said the n word I know people can't take that but anyway, I almost said it. But there's folks in Chicago that are doing the same thing because they still feel like they got women to catch. So I don't want to just blame L.A. and New York for it. I think our generation sucks when it comes to that part, period. So I'm just saying for you, how much do you put on your girlfriend, the person that you're dating? So you got, you got, you got me on your team. You got because I'm your brother, you got, you got uh, your manager on your team, you have another friend on your team, and you have this girl from your team. How much are you leaning into her? Um, I am leaning, that's a great question. I am leaning into her, uh, I'm leaning into her like, like uh, Robert Ory? I I'm leaning on her like Joe Clark in the movie. Lean on me, you heard me? I'm Joe Clark, baby. I'm I'm leaning on her because because I want her to know from Jump Street, hey, this is my life. And that being said, if you're gonna, if we're going to go past the friend stage, and if you're going to be in it, then even while we're dating, I don't want to shield the reality of my life from you. So I'm going to expose you to the reality of it. I'm going to try to expose you to it just verbally through talking to you. I'm going to try to make you almost like not like so, me through hey, me bro. telling you the, the realness ah! so much. Exactly. But let me tell you though, I feel the exact same way. I've always said I'm going to front load the issue. Right. I'm going to front load the problems. You ain't going to have to to, to peel a whole bunch of layers to get to the hard part of this life or the hard part of me. Pause. So all I'm saying is that when we, but I'm saying that I've run into a lot of people. I feel the exact same way, bro, but I've run into a lot of people who they do the, they do the opposite. They don't front load who they are. They, they layer themselves out. And so here's my, so, so this goes to why experiences got me to where I'm at right now is because since there are a lot of people in this generation, LA, Atlanta, Chicago, um, a lot of women, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't date dudes, so I don't know how we do it. And obviously I'm never going to really know how D is in a relationship. Um, all I know him as my brother. So I don't know how we do to y'all. Y'all let us know. But from my perspective, there's a lot of slow layering. A slow, like, I'm going to take, take my sock off. I'm going to take my sock off. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pull this drawstring all the way out. I'm getting naked. <laughs> but slowly, so slowly. And, and they do that 
which, which really does not work well with our approach of I'm putting you in this slot. I'm seeing how you operate in this position as my wife. You feel what I'm saying? It right. work well because when you are just taking the drawstring out, we don't it's really all know good. Up. Yeah, it, yeah. When you take when you're just taking the drawstring out, it's like it's like it's still very safe at, at that point. It's like if you don't listen. Ultimately, if the goal is you're taking all this stuff off, and y'all we talking in metaphors, don't make this like this about sex. We're not talking about yeah. Okay. Right, but if you're taking the drawstring off and all that, if oh look, if you're not gonna like the way I look, butt naked, like fully, I'd be like, I'd be like, hello. hello. I want you to right, like exposing myself to you, just. Hey, like I'm just finna show you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that that's it. Like I'm just finna, yeah, I'm too real for too but, real for TV. You hear me? That's too real for Hollywood. <laughs> I'm learning that's not uh, that's not really how they do it. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. They give I'm not saying that and people always say, oh, they put out a representative. I don't believe that the the the, the women I've been on dates with and the people I've dated, I don't believe that um they're being deceitful deceptive i don't think i'm not, i'm not saying they're wearing like i don't saying they're trying to lie to me and make themselves look like something that they're not i'm just saying that their comfort level and the way their comfort is set up and the way their trust is set up they slowly unravel they slowly reveal the problem is when we put them in that spot and now we're leaning on them yeah be that that does not work well because they're not fully a hundred percent they have a hundred percent the role but they haven't even shown up a hundred percent they haven't even revealed a hundred percent that's that's our fault though we can't you can't give somebody 100 percent that role if if they haven't revealed themselves 100 percent so that's what i'm saying how do you how do you how do you manage that because you really don't know you might I lost i lost bro i tried I, it's in my song d1 <laughs> feature in the game shine on out and out <laughs> um yeah, y'all go stream that, and you're gonna see. I lost, man. I, you know, I that that's. But it feels better knowing that you put your all out there, and it didn't work out, as opposed to like having those. That's all. That exactly. And you know what? I, you know, I didn't want to say this, but since uh, this young lady, Nakaya Michelle, she said, "Nah, I'm too old to be giving you half of me." You know, up front. And I will say that sometimes it really is an age generational thing. Bro, look at this comment. Look at this so comment. I appreciate, I appreciate the mature ladies out there that will say, hey, look, this is what I got. Take it or leave. Hey, look, look at this comment, bro. Look at this comment. No woman will give it all unless she got that ring. That is not, that's that not cool. Sucks. You're not getting a ring. If you're not, if, if I don't feel like I know all of you, like, and I understand that the word all can be misinterpreted in a lot of ways. Yeah. But when I say all, meaning that you don't have, you don't have a whole nother corridor to the house. That I have we, just ask, we just asking for identity. That's it. Identity. Right, right, we right, right, right. Identity. We asking for maybe, maybe a tour, maybe a blueprint, but you can't have secret, a whole secret wing. <laughs> you can't have a, a, a southwest wing, right? I thought, I thought I knew every. Where does wing come from? Well, right. you gonna reveal that because you know I didn't. I didn't. You know we. You know I'm. I, I, I'm. I'm slow with it. I like to be comfortable before I show that you know actually this basement is full of cobwebs. Hey, I'm gonna say this too, bro. I, and I don't know how you do when it comes to this, but this is me learning from experience, and this is me thinking even in the song that I'm talking about. I have a friend. You know how you ask what role the friends play? I would say this. Don't date in private. Because also, when we date in private, and when we kind of keep that to ourselves, and even our boys, even our close confidants, even the people who we absolutely know that their heart is in the right place, um, when they don't know who we're dating, or when they aren't able to kind of be in proximity with these people, we miss out on some valuable, valuable, valuable... Um, uh, perspective that we can get from our brothers they, they and, God has placed and, in our lives and you might end up missing and ain't nobody there <laughs> nobody knows who to blame nobody knows who to blame bro. but no but seriously like 
But to me, that's a part of of putting you in that role. And I, I mean, I feel bad about saying like trying you out in that role. It, but but like you gotta see my friends. You gotta be my friends. I, I you gotta see my niece and my nephew. You gotta you know kind of like I want to see how y'all rock. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it, that's just a part. That's a that's to me. It's not about even just getting friends' perspective. It's about you actually having that opportunity to observe them in your world. And that's the thing, man. Uh, you can have great players, but if they don't fit your team system, it can get real crazy. Mm. You can be a great player yourself, but if you don't fit into that system, yeah, yeah, this ain't going to work. And yeah. a player is no longer great. Um, uh, Melo, greatest, one of the greatest scorers of all time. But when the game started to change and become this three-point league and all the coaches wanted just to shoot threes and layups, and he's like a mid-range specialist, they didn't have room for him. They couldn't find out how to make him valuable again. And so, you know. But he got on the team that he, that he was a fit for, the Trailblazers. Eventually, but it was scary because it was looking like he wasn't going to be on no team. And so I just want to take this moment to encourage somebody out there, all the Carmelo Anthony's out there who know that you're great. You know you're a great scorer. And you feel like maybe the system – oh, I'm about to bless myself. You feel like maybe the system, the, the style of play is moving away from you. One, I want you to know that you are adaptable and you can move in that new style of play, but also that there really will be a team – that realizes your greatness. As a matter of fact, there are probably already some players out there that realize your greatness. And as soon as they get in position, like LeBron is, where he can actually call some shots, they're going to be calling your number. That's all I'm trying to say. Carmelo, be encouraged. Melo! <laughs> and I, I, and I want to give a big shout-out right now to all the time Brady's of the world. You heard me? All them people that you know the greatness within you but the world is sleeping on your potential for whatever reason. They either hating on you, they jealous, or they simply haven't been exposed to your greatness, you heard me? And draft day has come. And your name didn't get called in the first round. Boy, and you was like, oh, that's that drove right there. And then the second round came, and your name still didn't get called. And after the third round came, and your name still didn't get called, your own family started to hit you up like, hey, you sure you're going to ever get married? I mean, you sure you're going to ever get drafted? I mean, you, you sure it's a team out there for you? And you're like, man, I know I'm great. I just need a chance. You heard me? I want to shout out all the time Brady is out there because I know that even if you slip all the way to the bottom of the sixth round, mm, you can still. the 199th pick, 199. when you get drafted, I know that you have the ability to become a GOAT on that team that was willing to draft you. And trust and believe that there are general managers, there are owners, there are coaches out there that believe in you. And it might take a little longer for your name to get called, mm -hmm. but you better not, you better not with, withdraw your name from the draft. Ooh, board. don't go home. Don't, don't, don't go don't home. Go. Don't you do it. Don't you do don't it. Don't go overseas. Uh -uh. Don't go overseas. You belong right here, baby, in the NFL. I don't, wanna, I don't want this to feel like a competition, but I also want to say that I want to shout out all the LeBrons of the world. Now, here, my, I'm not even a huge LeBron fan, mm. but I will say that the best thing about LeBron is this man was on top of the world since he was about 14. Mm. This man graced the cover of... Of, of, of Sports Illustrated, Sports or Illustrated, one of them, before he was even able to vote or drink. All I'm saying is, the man was called to greatness very quickly, and the best thing about LeBron is not how great he turned out to be with all that hype. It's not about how great he turned out to be with his height and his body size. The greatest thing about LeBron is that. For all intents and purposes, everything that we've seen, the guy turned out to be a good man. And so I really value all those LeBrons out there that are doing some great things, that are spending a lot of time working and rehearsing and practicing and doing what you got to do to be a great figure, a great athlete, a great performer, a great this and a great that. But still, 
knows that the most important thing you can be is good to yourself, to your community, to your wife, to your kids. That's the best thing about LeBron. It's not that he turned out to be as great as he was, because we've seen that before. It's that he turned out seemingly to be just a good man. Mm -hmm. Great player, good man, great mm -hmm. man, just a good father, good husband. That, to me, that makes him one of the greatest of all time, even if he's not as good as, as, as Michael Jordan. Chill. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> Chill. Hey, that's beautiful, bro. And I, I agree wholeheartedly. And that's why... If we're talking about holistically, LeBron is clearly the GOAT over Michael Jordan. If we're talking about just on the court and you want to compare stats, I mean, his stats are still smashing MJ's stats. But what? they're that's, smashing. That's not true at all. Smashing. Not true at all. Smashing. Not true. In LeBron, any LeBron is going to end up with the most points of all time. He's played longer. He's played much longer. Whose fault is that? That was Mike. Sometimes not being a good man. That's a lot of greatness. That's some Tiger Woods high peaks, but you get low lows because of the of of I'm not saying he's a bad he's not a he's a low character guy. I'm saying that that a lot of the things that maybe inhibit, you know, you from having the long climb that LeBron has is a lot of times other issues that has nothing to do with basketball. You know why LeBron you know why LeBron is greater than Michael Jordan too? Because LeBron is going to end his career off being a top 10 assist man of all time. So how in the world do you have the capacity to, to score the most points ever in NBA history? Lord, Lord willing, he breaks that record. And also be top 10 when it comes to assists. How can you simultaneously be that great at scoring, but that good at helping others to score? That is amazing, bro. MJ? I'm, I'm, nowhere near that. I'm saying that... that that the female version of LeBron out there, all those female LeBrons out there, I value you and I celebrate you. <laughs> now, the female mics, I don't want nothing to do with you. I don't want nothing to do. From afar, I'm going to be like, dang, you the best. Nobody's ever had the high peak that, 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 that Michael Jordan. Nobody ever won a championship all-star uh, MVP, finals MVP, regular MVP, scoring title in the same, like, year, uh, you know, just two or three-year period. Nobody's ever done all that. D defensive player of the year. Nobody does all that. You are great. But what I'm saying is I do appreciate the LeBrons of the world. And quite honestly, I want to be one of the LeBrons of the world, one of the ones that you have to say was great but his character allowed him to stay there longer than anybody else. Mm -hmm. That's the goal, brother. I, I have to, I concur. That is my goal as well. Same thing, brother. Same thing. To be great on the court, to be great off the court, to be. That's so hard, man. That's so mm -hmm. hard. Cause it is different. But, it, but it's, but it's worth, it's worth the effort, bro. It's worth yeah. that because not, and it's not worth the effort because of other people celebrating us at the end of life and saying, oh, they, they were extremely rare. It's worth the effort because of the fact that we're, you know, we're supposed to die empty, man. And that's the only way that I think brothers like us are able to feel like we die empty. Because if we were simply focused on being great on the court, but not off the court, we wouldn't feel like we were maximizing our potential because we know that life isn't all about what you do on the court. It's not about what we do on the mic and on the stage. That's a big part of our lives, but we know, you know, we have, we have that Holy Spirit inside of us that won't let us rest easy at night knowing that, uh, that we didn't do, you know, metaphorically what LeBron has been um, off the court as a family man, as a, uh, as a philanthropist, you know, as a, as a thought leader. Um, so, yeah, bro. Yeah, that's... I love it. I mean, I, I'm sorry. I, I, you know, I be trying out songs in my head. <laughs> like, what is... <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so... Uh, no, you, you, you exactly right, bro. And um, I'm so glad we talked, bro. Like, you know, um, it would have been nice to actually see you and hang out with you. 
in in New Orleans or something like that. But um, it's just cool to talk, man. And uh, uh, we do. I think we want the same thing. One one of the things that that bound us together as as brothers is that we realized that so much of what we were looking for and what we were going through was similar. And I still think that it is. I think that that life over the past five years has taught us to look in different places for that same thing. And I think that's what we argued about this whole first time is, you know, you think that it's under that rock. And I'm like, but if you find it under this rock, then it's really cool. And, 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 but at the end of the day, you know, we just, we want the same thing. And you know what we don't want? We just don't want to choose wrong. Mm. Want to choose wrong. And so, you know, I'm grateful to God that, that, if if what that what those lyrics in that song i'm grateful to god she gone cuz i think so highly of you bro and i think that uh you know i just think you deserve the best i think you're a king uh you know we both have to figure out you know how to to be um the king of our house as much as we've been the king of of this kingdom that god has been giving us um learn how to shoot our love right to the person next to us uh, as much as we've been shooting it past, you know, you know, all over Instagram. But man, you know, I, I, I know it's going to happen for you and it's going to happen for me too. And we might be close, you know, but I'll tell you what, Instagram ain't going to know until I'm halfway down the aisle. Halfway. Bam here, baby. Do it. D, take the picture of us right halfway down the aisle. That goes on Instagram. By the time it gets published on Instagram, I hope the signal is bad. Because by right. the time it actually gets to Instagram, it's all going to be over. Ain't nobody going to have nothing to say about it. Yeah, bro. We, 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 we truly. Hey, y'all, in case y'all don't know, I say it all the time. David, which is my real name, and Jonathan, ever since the biblical days, they've been like this, y'all. They've been like freaking frack. And, you know, this is just, this is a manifestation of, of what started many centuries ago, brother. So I love you as well, man. And, you know, I'm always here, bro. Um, my line is always open. You know, if we ever, whenever we're in the same city, it's an honor to be in your presence, man. And, and you know, especially, especially when we are able to just talk like our talks. Our talks are, are, are definitely like, man, I hold them, I just hold them really highly, bro. Um, so, yeah, man, you, you already know how I feel like, I feel comfortable enough knowing that we understand how we rock with one another to where it's one of those what's understood ain't got to be explained type of things. And that, and that makes me feel good because I'm big on, I just posted it on Twitter, you know, make sure that you tell people that you appreciate them. I said something to that regard. Don't just assume that they know. Um, and I'm big on that at this point in my life is uh, expressing gratitude verbally to people because it does something to them when they hear that. But with you, bro, I never get tired of telling you that, man. And even if I don't get to tell you that often, I think that um, I pray that you know that, man. So now nah, just I'm wishing you a great uh, tour. Um, I, I was looking forward to coming. I was going to come to the Atlanta show. I was so excited. Um, turns out I have to speak um, at a school. I have to give a keynote uh, at a school in in uh, in Florida, South Florida. And I'm gonna be, yeah, I'm gonna, but I, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna come fly out and just pull up to another city, bro. Um, and yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited for you and for Miley for the EP dropping on Friday. Congrats to y'all, brothers, man. And you know, we got much more to do, uh, uh, artistically, musically, tour wise, all that stuff, friendship wise, brother wise. We just, you know, until God call us home, man. We, 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 we in this thing. I'm on your team, bro. I mean, don't. I'm not. I'm not your. I'm not your chat. But I, I'll be. I'll be a D fish. I'll. 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 I'll, I'll spot up in the corner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you just. Just throw me past. I'm gonna make that shot for you, bro. I love. You. I love you too, boy. All right, peace. Good night, y'all. Y'all be blessed.